Hello. So this will be module 12.1 and 12.2. We're going to be covering the Pythagorean theorem, and this will be from pages 375 through 386. This will be a longer video, so if you need to watch half of it now and then pause it for a bit and come back to it for the second half, feel free to do that. Uh, I do have a lot to cover today, but it's important stuff. So let's begin. I'm going to share my screen with you. So our standards that we're working in now are standards G6 and G7, geometry standards. I can explain a proof of the Pythagorean theorem and its converse, and I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to determine unknown side lengths in right triangles in real world and mathematical problems in two and three dimensions. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Pythagorean theorem. I will share the notes with you. What is the Pythagorean theorem? Something very important that you're going to need to know. The Pythagorean theorem is a famous and much used geometry theorem involving right triangles. This theorem is used in algebra, so you will use it next year. It's used in geometry. You will definitely use it there. It is used in trigonometry very, very much. It is used in calculus. It is used in engineering, and it is used in architecture and much more. So you are definitely going to want to know what the Pythagorean theorem is and how to use it. You must have a right triangle in order to use the Pythagorean theorem. So what is a right triangle? Well, let me draw one for you. A right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle. A right angle is an angle that is 90 degrees. So it makes an L any direction. It could be an upside down L, L uh, to the left, an L to the right. So you can see here, our L here is this spot right here. So our right angle is this corner right here. So that is a right triangle. Moving along, the theorem states, in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the length of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Don't worry if that sounds confusing because we're going to use numbers and it'll make a lot of sense. So if A and B are legs and C is the hypotenuse, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is a leg. Let me grab my little spotlight here. This is a leg, and we call that leg A. This is another leg. We call that leg B. And the hypotenuse is this side right here. That is called C. Now, the leg, could this be leg B and this be leg A? Yes, that doesn't matter. This, what, however, always has to be C. The hypotenuse is always C. So the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So here, usually, you've got this little symbol that tells you that it's a right triangle. This is your right angle. This means 90 degrees. So the side across from the 90 degree angle is always the hypotenuse. So you always have to know which one is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle, which makes sense because this length here is always longer than the two legs. So we're going to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go under the document camera and I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, something from your book that they were going to have you try. If you want to try it at home, feel free to do so. I will see you there in a moment. So here I am. I'm going to be working from page 375, and it says proving the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate what they're asking you to do. It's a little confusing in your book, but once you see it done, it will um, make more sense. So you're going to draw a right triangle on a piece of paper and cut it out. So I'm going to take my marker here and I'm going to make a right triangle. Now I know that. This corner is 90 degrees right here because it's a piece of paper and that's the 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to make a triangle like that and I'm going to be able to cut it out here, right? And we'll have a triangle and that'll be a right triangle. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm trying to do this under the dark camera. There is my right triangle, 
and you can turn it any direction, right? It can be this way, that way, that way. And then we're going to label it side. So which side is C? Which one is the hypotenuse? It's always the one across from the right angle. So C is this one. Which leg is A and which leg is B? Well, that doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make the shorter leg A and the longer leg B. Okay? So it's asking you to do that, to cut out the triangle. We did that. Now B says trace your triangle onto another piece of paper four times, arranging them as shown. For each triangle, label the shorter leg A, the longer leg B, and the hypotenuse C. Well, I went ahead and did the, these ahead of time so you don't have to watch me cut these all out. I actually made triangles here. So we need a total of four of them. So I traced them and I cut out four. Actually, this one's upside down, so let's use this one. Three and you cannot see that. Now you can. There are my four triangles here. Okay? And I labeled my hypotenuses C, my shorter leg A, and my longer leg B. So you can see that, okay? Now what they want us to do is arrange them like they have them in the book. So I'm going to take another piece of paper, and I'm going to arrange them as they have them in the book. They have one like this. They have one like... Da, 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 like this, I'll turn it upside down. They have one like corner like this. This one can't be upside down, it has to go like that. And what am I doing wrong here? That one's like that. Let me start over here. This one's like uh, A has to go. B has to go here. Yeah, this one's like this. Okay, now I got it. And then this one has to go like this. That doesn't seem right. A. And this one, oh, I think it goes here. There we go. And this one needs to go like this. And I think what I did is I turned my paper upside down. So I'm going to have to rearrange it going this way and go this way again with it so that it fits my square. I don't know if it'll fit my square or not. Not, no, it doesn't fit my traced square. That's okay. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to look like and we have our labeled things here. So how do we find the area? I'm just actually gonna just trace this with blue to the best of my ability here. Trying to, can you see that okay? I can't go much higher than that. And then this one. Ignore the squares in the middle. Okay, so now what I have is a square. So what is the area of this square? Well, what are the side lengths of the square? So you can see the side length. What's that side length here? C, right? What's this side length here? Also C, how do you find the area of a square? You take length times width. So in our case, we're taking C times C. So C times C, and I'll get a different color here. Nice big dark one here. C times C is really C squared. So that is the area of our square. This is a C, this is length C, this is length C. We go to the top, this is length C, and over to the left, this is length C. Area is length times width, so C squared is our length. Okay, now it tells you letter D. Trace your original triangle onto a piece of paper four times again. Okay, I have that already pre-done. 
So let's see that. I'm going to leave. I'm going to move this for now, and hopefully it's not going to fall, and the pieces will stay in place later. Okay, this is our other piece of paper. A nice pink piece. You can tell that's pink. I don't know. And I have my four triangles that I already cut out, and I labeled them A, B, and C, with C being the hypotenuse. And they want us to lay them out as in letter C, I believe. Yes. So we want to put B going this way. You can't see that, so now you can. And we want to put this one going this way. If you have, by the way, two right triangles that are identical in size, you're going to get a quadrilateral, correct? You can see that right there. And then we're going to have this one go here, like they did in the book. And actually, and this one go here. Actually, I'm going to replace this one with all of these because I'm not sure if it's the exact same size. So let's keep them all the same size if we can. Actually, maybe that was okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So I'm trying to keep these so they're not overlapping at all. Doing my best here. Move that over here and move that here. That can't be. Okay, it's got to be exact as best we can. Okay, and then what is the area of the unshaded square at the top right of the figure? So now we're going to go up to, we want to use the B length. I'm going to put a little dot. You probably can't see that. I'm going to put a little dot up here. You shouldn't go any higher than the A length. So, okay, what I wanted to do, kind of draw where they have the mark in the book. Hopefully this is not going to be exact, exact. I'm going to try my best, but for the sake of time, I'm going to do that. And then this edge here, now my paper's moved a little bit. So I don't want that. So this is going to be a little bit smaller. It's supposed to not be as long as it is in this piece of paper. So. like this, move that over. So we should have a little, like that. And then, so we shouldn't have it all the way to the edge of the paper. So I'll cut that out in a second. And then what we should have is those two squares. So they go like this, there. And approximately, these things keep sliding on me. Try it at home if you'd like. Actually, I think that just stays right like that. Okay, so now that we've got the second looking thing here, we have to look at, this should go all the way down to here. Okay. Now, if I can get it to show up in there, what we have is to figure out the area for these two. So the area for this one, let's take a look for a moment. What is the length of this side? Exactly, it's upside down, but it's an A. What is the length of this side? Well, we can't tell, but if I do this and I put a triangle there, can you tell that it's A? Yes, it is A. So the area of that little square then is A times A, A squared. Now what about the other area? And this moved again a little bit. This square here. Well, what's the side length? B. And what's this side length? Well, if we put the triangle up to it, it should be B, and it is. So the area of that square is B squared. Okay, now we go back to our original one that we made. 
And let me get that. Okay, this was our original one, if you remember, and I traced the square. Things are sliding a little bit. I traced that square, and we said the area was C squared, right? Okay, I'm gonna cut that out. And we're gonna compare it to the area after we've rearranged our triangles and just that other pattern. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it out. Now, it may not be an exact science here because I wasn't particularly completely exactly accurate with my measurements, but I was, it was a makeshift cutting out of those triangles. Okay, so here is my area that I have. And now, if I look, that should be the area. Let's cut those two out. So I have this one and I'm actually gonna trace it because we need to have a line to cut that out. So let's cut that out right here. And this one was to be cut out approximately, it keeps slipping on me, but if they hadn't slipped, it'd be about right here. Right? Okay. Now I'm gonna take these triangles off and I'm gonna cut those out. Like this. And I hope you're having a good day today. And that you are preparing for high school coming up. That's really an exciting time in your life. Because high school is a lot of fun and you don't get to do it twice, so you want to make the most of it while you're there. Now hopefully this will work out. Uh, not quite. I think it will if we cut this in half. But what should happen is these areas should be equal like that. So these areas, and if I had done it exactly right, will be equal. Like that. Now what does that tell us? All of that, and what on earth did I just say that that tells us? With all those triangles. Well, what is the area of the big one? That one was C squared. What was the area of this one? B squared. And what was the area of this one before I cut it? A squared, right? So the area of this C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So that is where we get our Pythagorean theorem of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so let's go back and remember. Let's pull this out for a second and make that yellow. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we just proved that by cutting out our right triangles, our four right triangles, and tracing the inside square that was made, and then rearranging them in such a way that we got the area of two smaller squares, a squared and a b squared. And we just proved that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's go on a little bit here and see how the Pythagorean theorem can be helpful in real life and in math. So two-dimensional use of the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. It's kind of a hard word to say three times fast. Give it a try. It looks like a tongue twister. It's like unique, unique New York. See if you can say unique New York three times real fast. I don't think I can. Unique New York, unique New York, unique New York. Oh, I did it. Okay, you try it. Okay, so here is a right triangle with a leg of 30 feet and a leg of 40 feet. And we have a hypotenuse right here because it's across from the right angle. We want to figure out what that hypotenuse is. What's the length of that hypotenuse? Well, we apply our Pythagorean theorem and we get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we put in the one leg, 30, 30 squared. We put in the other leg, 40 squared, and that equals c squared. So then we take our calculator or our brains 
and we figure out 30 times 30, because 30 squared is 30 times 30. That gives us 900. And then we do 40 times 40, and that gives us 1,600. So then we add 900 plus 1,600, and we get 2,500 equals, and we still got c squared over here. So in order to solve, when you have a variable that is squared, we did this at the beginning of the year. You probably forgot about it by now, but so I'm just going to refresh your memory. You take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of c squared and the square root of 2,500. So on your calculator, you should have a square root button. If not, you have to do trial and error. You've got to think what number times itself will give me 2,500. Well, 50 times 50 gives me 2,500. So the square root of 2,500 is 50. And the square root of c squared is just c because c times c is equal to c squared, right? So 50 is equal to c. So our hypotenuse then is 50 feet. This is actually a very famous right triangle. A 3, 4, 5 is a very famous right triangle. So this is a multiple of that. It's a multiple by 10, 30, 40, 50. You're going to um, want to, when you get into high school, memorize some of the very common Pythagorean theorem. I mean, right triangles for the Pythagorean theorem. So there is one application. I'm going to clear my drawings and go on to the next one. Let's try this one. This is a right triangle. How do I know that? because I've got the little right, right angle symbol over here. This triangle happens to be turned a little bit differently. That's okay. You're going to get triangles turned all kinds of different ways. So you've got to be able to look at them in different ways and figure out what the hypotenuse is. Hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse this time. And we have one of the legs. We are missing the length of the other leg. But we can still solve it. So we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we don't know a squared, that's our question mark. We do know b squared, that's 40 squared, right? And we do know the hypotenuse, c squared, that's 41 squared. And we take our calculator and we say 40 times 40, that's 1600, and 41 times 41, and I did that on my calculator and I got 1681. Now I have to solve to get a by itself. To do so, I'm going to subtract 1,600 from both sides, which is what we've been doing with our linear equations forever and ever. And if I subtract 1,600 and 1,600, positive and a negative, they become zero. They cross off, they're gone, they drop out. I'm left with a squared equals 1,681 minus 1,600 is 81. Now, to figure out what a is, I have to take the square root, because this is an a squared, I take the square root of a squared and the square root of 81. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side of the equation. So the square root of a squared is just a, and the square root of 81 is 9. So the length of my side over here is 9 inches. Okay, that's why the Pythagorean theorem is very useful. It's super useful in, in trigonometry too as well. Okay, hopefully you're understanding that okay. And by the way, these were problems in your book. I think they were on page, let me look and see which ones I picked. They were on page uh, 377, the your turn problems. I did those. Okay, let's move on. That was two-dimensional use of the Pythagorean theorem. What happens if we've got three-dimensional use of the Pythagorean theorem? Well, this is the problem in your book, page 378. It's at the top. It's your turn number six. So I've got it here for you on the screen. Here's a three-dimensional uh, rectangular prism. So here's the word problem. Tina ordered a replacement part for her desk. And let me just move this over here a little bit. And uh, it was shipped in a box that measures four inches right here by four inches by 14 inches. So I went ahead and drew labels for my numbers there. What is the greatest length in whole inches that the part could have been? 
So what they're asking is what size part, what's the biggest the part can be long-wise, length-wise, that will fit inside that box, okay? You don't want something too long that's not going to fit. So step one is to find S. So we're going to look and see where S is. S is this right here. So we're looking for right triangles. So we want to use our Pythagorean theorem. So I see a right triangle here, here, and there. I'm going to temporarily put a line of that there so we can see that. Okay, we have to decide with this, which one is the hypotenuse? What do we know about a rectangle? We know that a rectangle has a right angle corner. And even though this picture isn't drawn exactly to scale, there is our, is it that one or is it the other one? What do you think? Could be this one right here, right? But it isn't, it's that one right there. So now we have 14 squared, that's our leg A. This is our corner right here. This one is, I don't know. So here is our leg one. And our leg two is right here. And this is our hypotenuse right here. It's across from the right angle. So we have 14 squared, that's our A squared, plus our B squared. So what is the length of that right there? Well, if you look at it, it's the length of this side, isn't it? Aren't these sides exactly identical? So that's four inches, so four squared, and then that equals S squared or C squared. In our case, they're gonna do S this time. So, oh, I gotta keep that there. 14 squared is 196, four squared is 16, and then I have S squared. So 196 plus 16 is 212. I'm not going to take the square root because this is a step in the process to coming up with a three-dimensional use of the Pythagorean theorem. So 212 is equal to S squared. Okay, we're going to leave it like that. We could take the square root of 212 and get some decimal. We don't want to do that. So now I'm going to clear my drawings and I'm going to go to step two and I'm going to have to probably try to go back and forth. Step two is to find R. Okay. That is the length of the hypotenuse across from the top corner to the opposite bottom corner. So let's trace that first of all. Now we have to find R. And that is the same as this one and that one. And this is your 90 degree angle right here. So our hypotenuse is R. Right across from the 90 degree angle, here's our hypotenuse. This is our first leg and this is our second leg. Well, what is the length of that leg? Let's go down a little bit here. We're gonna have to move down. So four squared is the length of the first leg. And where did I get that? I got that from this. This height is the same as, grab my spotlight, this height over here. So that's four squared. And then S squared is my second side, right? And we already know what S squared is. That's why I said don't take the square root of it. We're gonna plug that in in a minute. And then they all, they both equal R squared right here. So four squared is 16, four times four. And S squared, we already figured out right here. Is 212, so I just plug 212 in there, equals r squared. So 16 plus 212 equals r squared. 228, 16 plus 212 is 228, that equals r squared, and now I am going to take the square root. So I have to do the square root of both sides, so I'm going to take the square root of 228, and I'm going to take the square root of r squared. If I do that, I end up with the square root of 228 on my calculator is 15.009 something, long number. So remember in the beginning of the year when we estimated square roots, you can either use your calculator or you can estimate a number close to the square root of 228. So I took it and rounded it to 15.1 and then the square root of R squared is R. So we wanted to find the length of R that would be the greatest size pole and let me see if I could draw a pole. Probably not. 
but we could try to draw a pool that would fit inside of this box here. This is going to be my weird pool here. That, or pipe, or whatever it was. That pipe, was it a pipe? Replacement part, cannot be longer than what? It cannot be longer than R, right? So it can't be longer than 15.1. Well, we want to do it in whole numbers because the problem says, what is the greatest length in whole inches that the part could have been? Well, it can't be bigger than 15.1. So 15 is the whole number that's closest. We can't do 16 because that's too long, right? So the greatest length of the part is 15 inches. Okay, if you want, now would be a good time to pause the video if you need a break. Otherwise, I'm going to go on from here and we're going to talk about 12.2, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle has to be a right triangle. That is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. It's proving that a triangle is a right triangle as opposed to an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle. So we want to prove that it's a right triangle. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem can tell you if a triangle is a right triangle as long as you know the three side lengths. So the three side lengths would have to be given to you. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared turns out to be true given the three side lengths that they tell you, then yes, you have a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared turns out to be false given the three side lengths, then no, you do not have a right triangle. And if you think about this, we did this with linear equations. We came up with uh, a point in a system of equations, an x point and a y point, and we plugged them back into both equations and we had to find out if that made a true statement to both equations. And this is kind of the same thing. We're just plugging in the side lengths of a triangle. So we're going to ask the question, is this triangle a right triangle? Here's the side lengths. 14 centimeters, 23 centimeters, and 25 centimeters. And this is actually in your book. This is problem number uh, two under the Your Turn, page 382. So I've skipped ahead now a little bit. So we set up our formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So uh, remember the hypotenuse has to be the longest side of the triangle. So that has to be your c squared. So between 14, 23, and 25, 25 is the longest, so that's my c squared. So I have 14 squared plus 23 squared equals 25 squared. Now I gotta check and see if that's true. So 14 squared is 14 times 14, that's 196. 23 squared is 23 times 23, that's 529. And 25 squared is 25 times 25, 625. So then I add 193 plus 529, and I get 725. And on the right side, I have my 625. And as you can see, 725 and 625 are not equal. So this triangle is not a right triangle. So that's the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's try one more. Is this triangle a right triangle? The side lengths are 34, 30, and 16. Remember the longest side the is the hypotenuse or the c squared. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to put the 16 and the 30 on this side and the 34 on that side and we're going to square them. And we're going to get 256 plus 900 is equal to 1,156. Then we're going to add 256 plus 900 and we're going to get 1,156 and that is indeed equal to 1,156. So yes, this is a right triangle because we have a true statement. Okay, that is all there really is to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Now I want to tell you about your homework. Well, actually, I wanted to go over the guided practice pages with you to give you a little bit more practice. So I'm going to go on to the screen with some of these homework problems and give those a try for you before we go on to what your actual independent homework will be. This is page 378. This is your guided practice page. So let's do this together. 
Find the length of the missing side of the triangle. So remember, we're using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have this side, that's a leg, and we have that side, that's a leg, and the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So this here is c squared. So we can label that c squared. And then the other two are a and b. It doesn't matter which one is a squared and which one is b squared. It does not matter. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 24 squared, they, they call that a. So I should probably just be consistent with what they're doing. And actually, it's not squared. It's just a. a and b. OK. And then this is also just c. OK, so a squared plus b squared is c squared. 24 squared, that's a, plus what's b squared? That is the other side, right? 10 squared. We all know what 10 squared is, right? 100. So that equals c squared. So then we have to do 24 squared. I get my calculator. I don't feel like figuring that all out. I bet you don't either. 24 times 24 is equal to 576. 576 plus 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. 576 plus 100 is 676, right? Let's use my text box here. 676, oh, why is that yellow? I'd rather have that red. 676 is equal to C squared. I don't know how to make a little two. I can just put a little, well, I can do this, just write it C squared like this. So to figure out 676 equals C squared, we have to take the square root of 676 and the square root of c squared. And when we do that on my calculator, if I do the square root and see if it comes out exactly even, I think it does, 676 square root it, I get 26 on my calculator. So 26 times 26 equals 676. So 26 equals c. So what do they want in that little box? Well, they wanted 676 in this little box. That was our total we came up with. And then when we take the square root, the length of the hypotenuse C was 26. So that is what they want there, 26. And I will clear away this extra stuff here. There we go. OK, number two. Mr. Wu, and I'm going to clear now. So if you need to pause it, go ahead, get it down. Uh, Mr. Wu wants to ship a fishing box. Now we're going to use the three. We're going to use the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, I believe. A fishing rod that is 42 inches long to his son. He has a box with the dimensions shown. Find the square of the length of the diagonal across the bottom of the box. So they wanted us to find R, which is that first one right here. And then they want us to find S, which is that one right there. So to find R, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Let me outline our triangle. So, so A is find the square of the length of the diagonal across the bottom of the box. So this is going to be like this. I'm just outlining our triangle here. Right here, that covered up my R, didn't it? So let's R back here. So this is R. Okay, so uh, R is our what? Hypotenuse, correct? Yes. So, uh, da -da -da -da. okay, so I actually reversed my letters, I just realized. So before we had used different letters, and I want to keep it consistent. You can use any letters you want, but they have this as R and this as S. Okay, so let's try to keep it consistent. So find the square of the length. So we've got a length of 40. That's our A squared. That's one of our legs. 40 squared 
plus our b squared is our other length leg. That's this leg right here, which is the same length as this right here, the width. So that's 10 squared. And together they are going to equal b squared. So 40 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. I don't have to do that on the calculator. I can just say that 1,600 plus 10 squared is 100. And that equals c squared. And remember, we're going to keep it in c squared right now because we're going to reuse that. Well, c squared is really our s squared at the moment. I'm just going to keep our letters the same, make it an s. It means c squared, but we're going to call it s. Because that's what we did on our other example. So 1600 plus 100 is 1700. 1700 equals s squared. Leave it s squared. And we're going to do part two. So find the square of the length of the diagonal across the bottom of the box. The square is 1700 right inches. So that's the square. We want to keep it in squares. B, find the length of the bottom corner of the opposite corner to the tenth, nearest tenth. Okay, I'm going to clear, erase some of this other stuff now that we knew how we got that. You can rewind the video if you didn't get that down. And I'm going to make a little clear way here. Not like that. I want to, I don't know why that box came from. But let's do this. So we have a little bit of space here. And then I'm going to just move it down just a little bit. Okay, find the length of the bottom. So now what we're going to do is find, and let's get rid of our lines here and new lines. Now we want to find the, the triangle that looks like this right here and this and that. Okay, and our right angle is right here. So our hypotenuse is R. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In our case, it'll be r squared because the hypotenuse is r. So a squared, what is the length of this side right here? Well, we figured that out over here, didn't we? That's the 1700. So we'll go back to this. So that is 1700 plus, what's b squared? b squared is this length right here. That's your up and down. What's the height of your box? The height is 10. So that is 10 squared. And not 102, 10 squared. I'll put a two there in a minute. Equals r squared, right? And I'll write those little ones in because I can't on the computer do that for any other way. The reason I don't have to put 1700 squared is because it's already squared from letter A. Okay, then it'll show up again. I add that up. 1700 plus what's 10 squared? 100 is equal to R squared still. And we'll put a little square there again. We add up 1700 plus 100, that gives us 1800 equals r squared or c squared. And now we have to do what to get r by itself? It's almost there, right? We got a little ex exponent with it. We take the square root of both sides. The square root of 1800, I believe it's 90, but let's see, 1800 square root, oops, no it isn't, 42 point something, yeah, so what was I thinking, so it's 42 point, some long number, 426, we'll just say 42.4, equals the square root of r squared is r, so what is the answer? What is the length? Uh, will the fishing rod fit? Okay, the length, it can't be any bigger than 42 inches or 42.4 inches, right? 
So what was the length of it? The Mr. Who wants to ship a fishing rod that is 42 inches long. So can you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can barely do it, but yes, he can do it. So the answer for that one is yes. So it's 42.4 inches. And the answer is these inches. The answer is a big yes. He can fit it barely, but it will fit. There. Okay. That's number two. Number three, here are my drawings. I don't know why that thing's in there. I have no idea why this box is here. There, oh, and away. Okay, number three, state the Pythagorean theorem and tell how you can use it to solve problems. Well, you just have to state it, okay? So just state the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says in a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Oops, c squared. Right? That's good enough. That's all you got to say. Okay? All right, let's go to do the other one, page 384. Stick with me. Hopefully you took a little break and we can keep going here. If not, take a break. Come back in a few minutes. Okay, LaShondra used grid paper to construct the triangle showing what are the lengths of the sides of LaShondra. LaChandra's triangle. Well, let's count. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One leg is eight units. What about the other leg? Which one's the leg? Hmm. This one's a leg, right? Because this is a hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle, right? Second one is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six units going up. And the hypotenuse is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units. Get rid of this here. Okay, so use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether the triangle is a right triangle. So how do we do that? We plug in the numbers and we see if we get a true statement. So Remember, the longest leg or the longest side is the hypotenuse, so that's the 10. So that's going to be our 10 squared. That's going to go right here. And we have a 6 here, and we have an 8 here. Or we could do 8 there and 6 there. It doesn't matter. So 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 8 times 8, 64. And 10 times 10 is 100. So we have to decide if 36 plus 64 equals 100. And we get 10, carry the 1, 9 plus 1 is 10. So 100 equals 100. So that is a, use my text box, that is a true statement. So that means that we can circle the correct answer here below it. The triangle that Lissandra constructed is a right triangle. Okay, the next one I want to do then is number two. And I'll clear my drawing. So I'll move it up. Number two, a triangle has side lengths 9, 12, 16. Tell whether the triangle is a right triangle. Well, remember the longest one has to be the C. So the longest one is 16. And we can put 9 and 12 either place, doesn't matter. 9 and 12, and then we have to do the squares of them, right? So 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 16 squared. Figuring out if that's true or not. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. 12 squared, hopefully you know that one, 144. And that has to equal 16 squared, and I don't have 16 squared memorized, so I'm going to do that on my calculator here. 16 squared, 256, 256. So now we have to add 81 and 144. 81 plus 144 equals 225. So 225 does not equal 256. That is a false statement. Oops, false statement. So because that's a false statement, 
that is not a right triangle. It could be a different kind of triangle, right? It could be a Galen triangle, an isosceles triangle, but it is not a right triangle. So we can circle that. It is not a right triangle. Okay. All right. Clear drawings number three. The marketing team at a new electronics company is designing a logo that contains a circle and a triangle. On one design, the triangle side lengths are 2.5 inches, 6 inches, and 6.5 inches. Is the triangle a right triangle? We're doing the exact same thing, plugging it into the formula. So the longest side is 6.5, so we're doing 2.5 squared plus 6 squared equals 6.5 squared. And I have to put my little twos by drawing them. So. So put a little two there, two there, and two there. And what happens when I do that? 2.5 squared, I think it's going to be 25, 2.5 2 squared is, oh, 6.25. What am I thinking? 6.25 plus 6 times 6, 36, is equal to whatever 6.5 squared is, 42.25. And let's add up 6.25 plus 36, 42.25, 42.25 is indeed equal to 42.25. So question is, is the triangle a right triangle? And the answer is yes. Y, E, S, it is a right triangle. Okay. How can you use the converse of Pythagorean theorem to tell if a triangle is a right triangle? You plug in the side length of the triangle into the Pythagorean theorem and see if you get a true statement, right? Let's stretch that out a little bit so it looks like it fits. That is the answer to number four. Okay, let's go back to our Word document and see what our homework is. Homework then is going to be, no, don't freak out on this, okay? Okay, so you're going to do guided practice, page 378. I just did that with you on the video. You should all have that finished. Independent practice, page 379, that's just the odds. You're welcome to do the evens too if you want. Guided practice, page 384, which I just did with you on the video. And then you want to do independent practice, page 385 to 386, just the odds, not including the hot problem. So I think there's only one problem on page 386 that you have to do. Then I want you to check out the Khan Academy assignments that I gave you. You have I don't know if today you're doing this, it'll be due on the 20th. So the Khan Academy assignments will be due on May 27th. I would like to get you a little bit familiar with Khan Academy. It will definitely be a help if you can use it over the summer to prepare you for your high school math class. So Khan Academy, I'd like you to do the following things. This gives you a week to do this. You have to do the introduction video to the Pythagorean theorem. I think the videos are like five minutes. Some are 10, not very long. Pythagorean theorem example video. Again, that's going to be a short video. Then you're going to do the Pythagorean theorem intro problems article. This is something to read. Then you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the right triangle side lengths. Those are exercises and it tells you right away if you got them right or wrong. And then right triangle side lengths exercises again. And then you're going to do geometry quiz number one. So I'll be able to see your work on Khan Academy and how your scores pull out. And I'm going to pull that into Google Classroom to um, give you a score for that assignment. So if you have any questions whatsoever, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer them for you. In the meantime, um, I hope you have a great day. Bye.